This is section 15 of the C4 Notes booklet, Integration Using Trigonometric Identities. It is on page 40 of the booklet. As usual, if it, it's a video, so if you want to take notes, you will need to pause the video at certain stages to do so. It's not like a lesson where I would pause and give you time. So, page 40. Now, the idea of using trig identities to integrate is to turn something you've already got into something simpler that we're able to integrate. So, you have to choose your identities carefully. Some of these examples are standard examples, some of them are not. There will be many different types, so make sure you know the standard ones at least, and then it's really a case of attempting. In the unusual ones, you're very often given a clue in the question to ensure that you go down the light right track. So in this case, tan squared of x, well, the, the identity revolving around tan squared is tan squared x plus 1 equals sec squared x, so we can replace tan squared with sec squared x, take away 1. Now, sec squared x integrates to tan, so we get tan x, 1 integrates to x, so our answer is simply tan x minus x plus c. So the original integral we can't do, but with this common identity, we're able to turn it into something where we do can integrate the individual terms, and that's how we use the identities to integrate. Now, when we did C3, we covered the half-angle formula, and it's the half-angle formula that you need to be able to integrate sine squared and cos squared. So, the example deals with sine squared, but to deal with cos squared is very, very similar identity. So, I'll write both half-angle formulae down so that you can use them. If you're really, really stuck, they come from the double-angle formula for cos 2x. So sine squared x is a half minus a half cos 2x, whereas cos squared x is a half plus a half cos 2x. So to integrate either sine squared or cos squared will require these two formulae. So sine squared x is the integral of a half minus a half cos 2x. And then those terms we can integrate easily term by term. So a half integrates to a half x. Half cos 2x, well cos tends to sine, and we divide by the 2. So minus a quarter sine 2x plus c. So again, it's about picking the right identity. So for the sine squared for this one, and a very, very similar example would be the cos squared one. Cot squared 2x. Less common, but 1 plus cot squared 2x equals cosec squared 2x. So we can place cot squared with cosec squared minus 1. Now from the C3 formula booklet, cot integrates to cosec squared. But we've got the 2x, so we have to divide by 2. So we'll do it. Cot, cot differentiates to minus cosec squared, so we'll need a minus at the front. And it's minus a half cot 2x, minus 1 integrates minus x, plus c. So this one is more unusual, you'd be more likely to see the tan squared one than the cot squared one to integrate. Part D is unusual, but uses some of the work we've already done. So first we multiply out. And we get sec squared x plus 2 sec x, 10 x. Plus tan squared x dx. Sec squared can be integrated, so can sec x tan x. Tan squared can't, but we, as we did in part A, we, we can replace that with sec squared minus 1. So we'll end up with 2 sec squared x 
minus 1 plus 2 sec x tan x dx integrated term by term sec squared integrates to tan so we get 2 tan x 1 integrates to x and from the C3 formula booklet we know that sec x differentiates to sec x tan x so going the other way 2 sec x tan x will integrate to 2 sec x don't forget plus c and as I said that's only touching the surface all the different integrals you can do with identities but we have dealt with the common ones and as a lot of things regarding integration or indeed maths lots and lots of practice will allow you to become more confident and know which identity to use let's say in the most unusual cases the exam will give you clues as to which identity you need to use. 